morning, everybody. Game time, Brian, otherwise known as the mailman. Day, well, I was off Monday, right? I was off Monday. So to me, this is my hump day since I got to work Saturday. But Thursday morning here, rise and grind. We were grinding out another day here in South Jersey. Uh, looks like it's going to be an overcast day. Um, the weather, temperature-wise, is splendid, but the, um, the rain is going to come later this afternoon. There's going to be a percentage, a low percentage all day, but, um, usually about, I think about 3 o'clock is when it gets up to like 40-some. I may be able to dodge it all together yet again, like I did yesterday. I did dodge the rain yesterday. Um, I don't know that it ever did rain. Maybe it sprinkled a little bit, but I was done, so I was good. Um, so good morning, everybody. Not much really to talk about, but I like getting this morning video up. Um, shoot the breeze. Hopefully we can get done in a timely fashion here uh, today. Maybe get to the gym, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. I went yesterday. Long day yesterday. Really good show last night. Thank you for the new uh, members to the Mailhead crew. Thanks to Oscar Perini, who uh, I believe Oscar is the one that said we're a bunch of mailheads. But whoever uh, coined that, put it in there. I thought it was Oscar, but it may have been somebody else. It may have been somebody else. So leave it in the uh, the comments of who actually started it. Um, but I went with it. I didn't know what to name it. There you go. Four ninety nine a month. We're gonna start doing a zoom call in um let i just need to find out i'll probably end up doing it sundays now probably before marks just to uh until we get settled in um yeah we'll talk about stuff we'll do a zoom call we'll, whoever wants to join join if nobody joins in because there's only a few members then i'll do a show we'll do mock drafts we'll do whatever we will do whatever um we didn't have no malfunctions last night with the mock drafts so that was good. Um, the, the, you know, my computer uh, cooperated. But I did uh, tell Phil last night, right? I did tell him, watching Dan Cilio, I believe that's how he likes to pronounce it. I say Cilio, but Cilio. Either way, it's Italian. Ex-cowboy, ex... He wasn't really a good cowboy, but he played pro football. Ex-cowboy... Ex Detroit Lion, ex Tampa Bay Buck, maybe Raiders, won a national championship with Jimmy Johnson at the U. Is friends with Jimmy Johnson at up, you know, as of right now. He talks to Jimmy all the time. He asked Jimmy Johnson to go on the show to talk a little Dallas Cowboys. And you know what Jimmy Johnson said? Jimmy Johnson says, I'll talk to you after the draft. I'm helping the Cowboys. Word to God, Jimmy Johnson is consulting. Now, I got news for you. I know the type of man Jimmy... Well, I don't know him personally. I know Mark's met him and interviewed him. I, Jimmy Johnson they ain't going to play no games. He ain't going to be hung out to dry. He didn't want to do it the first time when he was in Dallas, when he was coaching the team, right? When he was coaching the team and Jerry wanted to take all the shine from winning the Super Bowl, was the deflecting a lot from Jerry. Uh, if Jimmy, if Jerry was. Listen, Jimmy wasn't long for that job or any job in the NFL. He was worked 20 hours a day. His personal life suffered because of it. This is a perfect role for him. So I would say maybe a lot of what's going on now, some of you uh, in the comments put, oh, this looks a lot like Jimmy. Like, like everybody's scared for their job type. Um, here's the difference, though. It, it does seem a lot like Jimmy, right? It does seem a lot like something Jimmy would do. Um make people feel uneasy about their job security. Um, you know, 
make you go to work not knowing, put in the work. Not that they're not putting in the work, but maybe you have a little bit more of an edge than you might normally. I don't know. I would say this. In this day and age, when your quarterback is making $55 million a year, and offensive linemen are making millions and millions, kind of like the same reason why Deion Sanders doesn't want to coach in the NFL so far. I'm not saying he won't coach in the NFL, but I'm saying as of right now, he doesn't want to coach in the NFL because he don't know how to motivate men making millions and millions and millions of dollars. So let's think of that for a minute, how hard it is to motivate. But it seems like for Dallas and the Dallas Cowboys, it seems harder than most. Not that they're not motivated, but when you hear comments like certain players were tired, come on, man, you're in the friggin' playoffs. I know D-Law wasn't tired. He didn't play tired. But... You're in the playoffs, man. You should be excited. New birth. This is fun times. This is what you live for. Some teams, as I showed last night, as I put the graphic up last night, with um, all the Super Bowl wins, you know, Trey, uh, Stephon Diggs liked a tweet that said the Bills have some of the worst fans in the NFL. Why would you do that, Stephon? The Buffalo Bills have never seen the Super Bowl. They have never held up the Lombardi Trophy. Never. They've never held up the Lombardi Trophy. So for you to make a statement, Stefan, I don't want you in Dallas, bro. You got issues, man. You can't keep your mouth shut. Go take your millions. Go play for the Texans. I wish you well. Stefan Diggs alone is making me root against the Texans. Sorry, Eastside. You don't do that. That's low class. On your way out, you don't do it. You went, you didn't like it in Minnesota. Or you liked it until they wouldn't pay you. Then you went to Buffalo. Then Buffalo was the best thing since sliced bread. And now, they traded you. Now you're shitting on them. It's a pattern here. You're costing yourself millions on the back end. I'll just tell you that. Maybe do what Brandon Cooks has done. Right? Maybe do what Brandon Cooks has done. And uh, I'm not I'm not saying Stefan hasn't made more money than Brandon Cooks, but Brandon Cooks is beloved everywhere he goes, and he's been traded multiple times. Why? Because he's a good player, and they can get something for him. That's why they're getting to the he's getting to the age now where the nobody's going to really want to trade for him for any length of time. But um, getting back to the Jimmy Johnson thing, um, I don't know how. You motivate these players if you're not motivated already by having a number two seed, having home field for at least uh, the championship game, and your and yet some of your players that falls at the coach. Sorry, I love Big Mike McCarthy, but that falls on your shoulders. You got to take the hit for that, and the quarterback, the leaders of the team, because we hear that they is a Dallas Cowboys have a big, big leadership problem. Well, if you want to make the big money, Dak, or CD, or Micah, somebody needs to step up and lead. And part of leading means going up to the front office and Jerry Jones and tell him, yo, what are you doing? This is what we need to do to win. Unless you don't know how to win, Dak, CD, Micah, whoever you want to call the leader of this team. You know the leader, the the quiet leader of the Dallas Cowboys, right, was Troy Aikman. Now, he would open his mouth a lot, but the vocal leader was, and ask any of the ex-Cowboys back in the 90s, was Michael Irvin. He was the leader of that team. When it needed to get into people's asses and when it needed to pump people up, Michael Irvin was that guy. Now, Troy did it as well. Troy did it begrudgingly towards the end of his career, especially when Barry Switzer came in, and there was no rules. It was, don't take this personal. The inmates run in the asylum. So, I'm not saying there's inmates running the assignment, uh, of the assignment with the Cowboys, but who is the leader? You just saw it in an interview a couple weeks ago. With Charles Haley saying there is a void in leadership. Micah Parsons, step up. Again, I'm not here to crap on your podcast. I walked myself back on that, especially after 
what other te- I mean, other players are doing and getting in trouble with the law. I'd rather have you doing a podcast than doing anything like that. So, Micah, my bad on that. But emotionally, it sucks for me because I feel like you're just putting a bigger bullseye on the Cowboys. But again, we always had a bullseye back in the day. Everybody knew what we were going to run. Everybody knew what we were going to do, but we didn't give a shit. We did it anyway because you couldn't stop it. That, you know, that's the difference. So, who was going to step up to be the leader of this team? Mikey, you want that gener- uh, you know, you want that big, big money? You're going to need to be a leader. A leader is the first one in the door, the last one to leave. Vocal, put your time in. Dak, you've been a leader on this team. So, it seems like the Joneses don't appreciate it. But I'm just going to tell you, a real leader, though, will come out in defense of the team against the organization. That's what happens. You see how they're treating you anyway, Dak. But I don't know who it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be a CD. Maybe he's not on the team yet. But I got news for you. Am I paying $35 million, $30, $35 million for a defensive player who doesn't want to lead? No, I'm not saying he doesn't. But as of now, he hasn't stepped up to be that leader. I don't know if it's because guys like D-Law are still there. I don't think Mike is that. I don't think Mike takes a backseat to anybody. Emotionally, verbally, I don't. But we need to see somebody other than Dak Prescott. Because apparently, the way it looks, Dak's not going to be here long term until he is. But I don't really like. You saw the interview with Cam Newton on Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp. How they were ripping Dak, uh, yeah, not ripping Dak, but Dak needs to open his mouth. Dak needs to open his mouth and call out the organization when he's giving them, he ain't giving them all the ingredients to put a a good meal together. Now, I'm not saying, I know people are going to say, well, this year we had this, that. I'm not saying we never had talent. I'm not saying we don't have talent. I'm saying more verbal. You don't think, like, we need a number two receiver? The source close to me tells me that Jimmy Johnson, the first thing that he told Jerry Jones is is that we need a number two receiver on this team, that we don't have one. Brandon Cooks is not a number two. If you looked at his releases last year, Brandon couldn't get off the ball and get open as much as he used to. I'm not saying he was never open, but we need a true number two receiver next to CeeDee Lamb. That's why my mock draft I traded down a couple times. I traded down in the 20s, and I traded down again into the 30s. And we got, we added some picks. We had five picks in the top 90-some. That's what you want. I was able to get a Malachi Corley. A Debo clone. Yeah, I know he's not Debo, but a guy, you get the ball in his hand. You got to, like, you know, when everybody's lined up, they're looking at it and says, where's, where's Debo at? Where's Debo? Like, we know we got CD, and we know we got whoever the running back's going to be this year. We know we got, you know, uh, whoever. We know we got Braylon Allen in the background, or we know we got Shipley in the background, or we know we got, you know, Jalen Wright in the background, Speedster. We know we got him in the background, but who's got Debo? You need that second guy. You need it. It opens up everything. Just imagine people how good jake ferguson is now add another dynamic number two receiver then tell me then tell me what how that offense is going to be that's what Dak prescott needs to be talking or whoever the quarterback of the cowboys is say yeah i don't know what bull junk you you guys are trying to pull but we need another weapon on offense not named cd lamb and Jake Ferguson. Hopefully that's what we're about to get. And I know, I think I've convinced a lot of you not to get too caught up in names of who we're going to draft. Just do the right thing. Drop a couple picks. That would be the right thing to do. So, with that being said, don't forget to join me around 2 o'clock. Around 2 o'clock. On my lunchtime chat live. Live from the mail truck. As I spend my lunch with you. Oh, and one more thing.
I look rough. I'm not awake yet. Blue. Happy Easter. Peace.